So try to extract Maitreya's Sutra. Question was asked by Maitreya, what can a Bodhisattva, how many, at what discipline, how many discipline or a method can a Bodhisattva apply to vanquish the um, It's 
some of the singing? Yeah. Nice. To vanquish the um, samsara or the this is something I need to or talk uh, explain a little bit. To vanquish, destroy, overcome. Um, I think the literal meaning of the word nyansong in Tibetan is something non-virtuous, non-virtuous state. But uh, popularly, we, uh, uh, we understand this, uh, we, we translate this as a as some sort of. Um, it is important that we sort of uh, don't. Um, sort of generalize, when we talk about the samsara, oftentimes we generalize the idea of the samsara as something very negative and painful and, um, well, of course, at glance, which is correct. Of course, it's painful, it's negative, it's uh, binding, it's dualistic, it's deceiving. But um, many times, what we consider as wholesome, what we consider as virtue, what we consider as um, moralistic, what we consider as uh, uh, wholesome. If we look deeper into these um, phenomena, many times they are either cause of a samsara or they are samsara. So it's important that we do not generalize. Uh, for instance, um, when we talk about the samsara, when we talk about the lower birth, from the, strictly from the Buddhist point of view, we are talking about any kind of state that takes you or that is further from the, the truth, anything even if it looks like a um, virtuous path, even if it, if it appears as a virtuous path, if it takes you away, or if it is concealing the truth, then it is another bondage, it is another chain. Whether you are bound by a golden whether you are bound by an iron chain or whether you are whether you are bound by a golden chain, it really doesn't matter. As long as you are chained, you are not free. So when Maitri asks, what method or what discipline a bodhisattva can apply in order to vanquish the cause of the samsara and the samsara? We are talking about a much grander and much more uh, sort of holistic or much more um, comprehensive um, aspect of the samsara. And then also the question has this element of what mix, what will, uh, what method or the discipline can a bodhisattva be free from the influence of negative or non-virtuous friend? Again, here we are talking about um, not necessarily, of course, a friend that gives you influence of violence, influence of greed, influence of um, basically any forms of distractions. But fundamentally, we are talking about a friend or um, relatives or any kinds of. Um, person or a situation that takes you away from understanding the truth is what we call the non-virtuous friend.
And then the third element of the question is what kind of discipline will make the Bodhisattva quickly achieve the enlightenment? In other words, quickly understand the truth in a complete sense. And we have already, I've already um, briefly talked about the first answer, the answer being only one, only one discipline or the practice or the technique can <coughs> save the Bodhisattva from the non-virtuous uh, friend, uh, free the Bodhisattva from samsara and quickly achieve enlightenment and that is the bodhicitta, the part of the bodhicitta. And part of the bodhicitta, just to remind you, is really a wish, at the least, a wish to enlighten all the sentient beings. So we are talking about not just giving them shelter or food or some sort of a philanthropic um, practice, but really working to make the other beings free from the delusion. And when we talk about delusion, we are talking about looking at an illusion and thinking it as real. And that is what is binding all the sentient beings. So, wishing to enlighten them, wishing to make them free from this kind of defilement, this kind of delusion, is what this is what bodhisattvas must apply and only this could also <coughs> achieve all the three elements of the question. So then the Sutra actually elaborates this much more. The next um, Buddha elaborated by saying Maitreya also with the two kinds of discipline or the method Bodhisattva can save themselves from the non-virtuous friend or the influence, Bodhisattva can be free from the samsaric existence and Bodhisattva can achieve enlightenment quickly. And those two are um, discipline of non-distraction and discipline of <coughs> seeing, the, um, having the insight of the phenomenon. <coughs> In other words, Shamatha and the Vipassana. And just briefly, I'm sure many of you have already um, had many teachings about Shamatha and Vipassana. Um, these two are sort of complementary. Uh, they they complement each other, you know, uh, they complement each other. Shamatha, not only they complement each other, in fact, a yogi or a bodhisattva who excels the path of the Shamatha and Vipassana, they achieve a certain um, they become so savvy or they become so um, accomplished in these two techniques that shamatha and vipassana are accomplished simultaneously. But nevertheless, when we, when we categorize these as a path, we tend to um, categorized as a path to not distract, a technique technique to not distract, and also the technique to understand the truth. Um, now, understanding the truth, as I have been repeating many times, is the key to destroy the The root of the, the root of the cause of the samsara. I'm repeating this again and again. Why are we being bound in the samsara? 
because we have a delusion. And what is delusion? Delusion is simply looking at an illusion and thinking it as real. And since we have had this delusion for so many, many lifetimes, this has become a habitual pattern. And a strong habitual pattern is what we need to uh, sort of uh, vanquish or destroy or uh, dismantle. So for that you need a total sort of the opposite way of thinking, which is uh, basically the vipassana the understanding that uh, basically seeing the delusion as delusion I mean seeing an illusion as an illusion <coughs> when you look at the illusion instead of thinking it as a real you first you apply hearing you apply then contemplation and gradually you develop this um, how should I say um, you you, de you habituate yourself and um, change, replace the old habit and develop new habit of seeing the illusion as illusion. And by doing so, you begin to um, loosen the grip or the clutch <laughs> which you have had uh, because of the delusion and then you begin to um, get less entangled with um, delusion and by having less entanglement with the delusion you create less cause and condition meaning you create less karmic uh, consequences and as you create less karmic cons uh, create less karmic consequences, you then begin to uh, be free from the. I mean, uh, as you begin uh, to um, engage less and less with a karmic action, then you begin to free yourself from the karmic consequences. And when you finally free from both the cause, condition and the effect of the co consequences of the karma, then you are totally free from this sort of the entanglement of cause, condition, effect and emotion. And this is what we call end of the samsara. So this is why the vipassana is so much encouraged to really understand um, I mean, the Vipassana is so much to do with um, understanding illusion as an illusion. But this is not that easy to achieve for, especially for those, as I've said earlier, those who have so much habit of seeing illusion as real. Again and again we fall into this trap. And the, one of the reasons why we fall into this trap again and again is because we are so easy, we are easily distracted. We, we get distracted again and again and again. Moment by moment we get distracted. And hours and hours we get distracted. Days and days we get distracted. Years and years and lifetime after lifetime. And as the distraction grows, <coughs> distraction creates action, action is a, uh, action then creates cause and condition and obviously action then um, produces consequences. When the consequence happens, you create, you then have more hope and more fear and more hope and more fear means more delusion, more entanglement and this is how we sort of um, entangle ourselves. So, before we apply the vipassana, so to speak, 
for the beginners, before we apply the Vipassana, we learn the technique of not getting distracted. Technique of not, not, uh, not being distracted. And this is called the Shamatha. And there is a myriad ways of learning how to apply the Shamatha from a very simple technique of watching your breath all the way to uh, just simply being aware of whatever happen whatever is happening right at this very moment. The sound you hear, the taste that you taste, the, uh, the visions that you see, um, the feelings, um, thoughts, uh, references, just simply being aware of that, not making any judgment, not making any effort of abandoning or adopting. And what this does is then it settles your mind, it then creates a, some, uh, some sort of a ability to the control maybe is not the right word, but you then develop this, um, how should I put it, um, uh, ability to make your mind uh, malleable, make your mind, um, basically your thoughts, your mind will follow according to your wish, so to speak. So you become you control the thoughts, not the thought controlling yourself. I mean, this is just a metaphorically speaking. And when that happens, then it is easier to understand the, how should I put it, um, then you, you have created the perfect ground to understand, I mean, uh, to engage into the Vipassana, which is to actually understand the truth. Now, Shamatha and Vipassana is a really, really a big subject, uh, which I'm sure you, know, you have heard many times. But since this is part of the teaching, I'm just summer. I'm just putting it in a very, you know, a simple and summarized way. Um, but anyway, uh, Buddha's answer to continuous answer to the one question by Matriya. Um, there are two disciplines that the Bodhisattva can apply, and these two are applying the discipline of the Shamatha and the Vipassana. And the next, Buddha said, again, the Bodhisattva can actually apply three disciplines. If, you know, we are talking about elaboration. So as you can see, if you are Really, if you have a superior faculties, all you need is the bodhicitta, and that takes care of all the. Um, how should I? That that is a complete path, path to vanquish the samsara, path to free yourself from the bad influence, and path to quickly achieve enlightenment. But since the deluded beings like us. We need categorization. We need choices. We need more, uh, sort of uh, more. What do you call it? Um, we need uh, like uh, numbers. We need um, uh, varieties of the path. Buddha then begin to elaborate. So the now there are three disciplines of methods that uh, Bodhisattva can apply. And that is having compassion, generating the compassion or accomplishing the compassion. The exact word is the accomplishing the compassion. And then understanding the shunyata, emptiness. And then the third is after having the compassion and after having the after understanding the emptiness, not being arrogant about having the compassion and understanding the shunyata. These three will then um, save the bodhisattva from the non-virtuous friend, free them from the samsara, and quickly achieve enlightenment. 
compassion is basically wishing to free sentient beings from suffering. Understanding the shunyata is a really a big um, subject, which I don't think we can just uh, quickly go through here. But um, basically, um, when we talk about understanding the shunyata, we are talking about understanding the absolute truth of everything. Um, if I put it in a very, very um, simple way, uh, understanding the shunyata is basically knowing that appearing, how it appears, how things appear, is not how things are. Also, another way of putting, um, under, uh, uh, another way of explaining, uh, understanding the emptiness is everything appears like the sound, like the vision, like the taste. Everything can appear while it is emptiness. While everything is empty, everything can still appear. While everything appears, everything is emptiness. Bodhisattva can apply, for instance, the vipassana that we talked earlier. Uh, first, the Bodhisattva might um, go through intensive hearing of the Shunyata, and then, um, of course, with the support of the uh, uh, Shamatha, um, with the ability of non-distraction, developing uh, vipassana of understanding the um, true nature of everything. And the third element, the third discipline where Buddha uh, said, yet the Bodhisattva never being arrogant about it. And this is a very important Mahayana uh, sort of uh, advice in many sutras this is said in fact um, a bodhisattva who is a really accomplished compassionate being and someone who is really understanding the shunyata um, thoroughly does not have this downfall of arrogance when the bodhisattva is in the beginning stage when the bodhisattva is just beginning to develop compassion, just beginning to have a glimpse of shunyata. Probably, you know, certain days the Bodhisattva experiences the shunyata. Uh, maybe the Bodhisattva time to time see, okay, for instance, the sign of understanding the shunyata can be something like this. When somebody prays, these that if you have absolutely no understanding of the shunyata, if somebody praises you, you get so excited. If somebody criticizes you, you get so depressed. But when you begin to have a, a little taste of the shunyata, then you begin to understand the futility of the praise and the futility of the criticism. But then, because you are still not yet matured, as you begin to have this kind of one taste between, you know, the praise and the criticism, happiness and unhappiness, gain and loss, attention and being ignored, when you are beginning to have, maybe in good days, when you are in good mood, when you are in a good situation, when you begin to have a little bit of that experience, Bodhisattva, <coughs> young Bodhisattva, not mature Bodhisattva, immature Bodhisattva may have, may begin to have some sort of arrogance that, oh, now I'm beginning to actually level these eight worldly dharmas. Similarly also, when the Bodhisattva, when in the beginning stage, sometimes the Bodhisattva will actually have a genuine compassion to other sentient beings. As they look at, look at other sentient beings, those who are totally entangled with defilements, those who are entangled with all kinds of futile, you know, endeavor, 
those who are so stuck with gold teeth, Gucci bags, you know, those, you can see how ridiculous, maybe a very small portion of compassion, you begin to feel for them, how, you know, how they waste their time, how they waste their energy, so on and so forth. But because you are a young bodhisattva, then you may feel very arrogant and proud for having such kind of a <coughs> so, compassion. So this is why uh, in, the, in this section, in this uh, category, Buddha said, compassion, understanding of the shunyata, and not having arrogance of having the compassion and understanding the shunyata. We will go on. And the Buddha said, you can also have a four different disciplines, four kinds of techniques that the Bodhisattva can apply, so that the Bodhisattva will be free from samsara, so that the Bodhisattva will be not under the influence of non-virtuous friends and quickly achieve enlightenment. And what are these four? Bodhisattva has to be disciplined. And the Bodhisattva should not have any doubt to the absolute truth. And the Bodhisattva should be Bodhisattva should be um, Bodhisattva should um, I should have done but another mm -hmm. Bodhisattva <coughs> should long Bodhisattva should long for isolation. Gamba, Gamba long for isolation, retreat. Bodhisattva Bodhisattva must like the isolation. Uh, I will explain this. And then a Bodhisattva must um, Bodhisattva must um, be unwavering. I think that's a good translation unwavering from the commitment that the Bodhisattva, whatever the task, a Bodhisattva task or the Bodhisattva responsibility that he or she has undertaken or committed to, the Bodhisattva must be unwavering. So let me just give you sort of my interpretation, the discipline. The discipline is absolutely important this is what Nagarjuna had to say. Discipline is like the uh, fertile ground. If you have a discipline, all the virtuous quality will um, grow without any effort. And when we are talking about the discipline, we are talking, you know, we are talking about all kinds of discipline. The discipline of being consistent, for instance. This is one of the most important disciplines. Uh, I think uh, time and again, some of we have discussed this. Uh, we may be, because we, uh, we encounter all kinds of uh, different situations, sometimes we get so inspired to practice the Dharma. Sometimes we get so depressed with a samsaric world. Sometimes something happens to your life, such as loss of a family member or a, uh, being deceived by a trusted friend, whatever. And when that happens, suddenly you have a pang of renunciation mind. You have a urge to look for a spiritual path. But then, because we don't have the discipline of being consistent, it may last for about a week, but then your motivation, your sad, your this uh, heart of sadness, your um, what do you call it, uh, that 
perseverance or uh, that your continuous continuation to practice the spiritual path wanes and then again it disappears so we are talking about all kinds of discipline here we are talking about a uh, discipline of being consistent and discipline of it can be really you know discipline can um it's like this um you can even apply a something so simple like um looking at a buddha statue every day three times and this simple discipline the simple practice if we can apply consistently it becomes a discipline but lack of discipline can also be like when you are so inspired you s- sit in the temple you meditate hours and hours but then uh, sooner or later uh, soon or maybe later you lose this inspiration and then laziness creep in loss of inspiration creeps in and then you even begin to sort of really not trust that whatever you are doing is actually even a beneficial you are not motivated you are not inspired at all and at that time you just totally drop your practice you do you practice Uh, you drop the bodhisattva activities you drop you basically discontinue and this is where the lack of discipline begins to uh, happen you know, sort of uh, take over you and then after many days or months or years you again have to start getting motivated start so even for the young immature bodhisattvas even there are days when we are totally not motivated totally not even wish to enter into a temple look at look at the buddha uh, statue uh, let alone you know sit and meditate and chant mantras one must even if it is a short duration one must try to discipline ourselves and be consistent even though that practice may be totally uh, appearing as a fake and not genuine but discipline you have to develop this discipline so if you can sort of continuously be persistent in sort of habituating yourself then you generate the discipline and this is just one aspect of the discipline so of course there's many many other grander discipline of the bodhisattva such as the such as well namely there's three different kinds of discipline which is um nature don't be such um the discipline to um how should i say um refraining ourselves from doing the wrong thing such as non virtuous actions that's one discipline such as you know like not killing not stealing so on and so forth the next discipline is geva chudi jitsudan the discipline to up, uh, acquire collect and um, how should i develop virtuous action <laughs> generating this um, uh, habit of acquiring it's uh, collecting uh, looking searching basically um
the discipline uh, discipline of um, accumulation accumulating the virtuous virtuous thoughts and actions and then for the particularly for the bodhisattva the discipline of disciplining ourselves to create this joy of helping others it could be just giving a glass of water it could be just giving a something so meager like a vegetable all the way by d you habituate yourself in you know like creating learning to create learning to have the joy of helping others until all the way that you have absolute absolutely no qualms of giving up your own limbs your eyes probably your body probably your own children not only not have any qualms but in fact have so much joy of giving others whatever they they need so such kind of discipline is um, what this is talking about and then church and give us some new member where this is uh, sort of a similar thing that we talked earlier absolutely no doubt on the shunyata of course we are talking about you know after thorough hearing after thorough contemplation and finally coming to the conclusion that nothing exists inherently everything is just an illusion everything is just a projection of my mind nothing truly exists out there and not having that kind of conclusion only intellectually but actually practically how should I put it emotionally almost really coming to that term wholeheartedly and without any doubt to this kind of shunyata is one of the discipline here or the one of the technique and Gambala number and then the Bodhisattva must learn to have this joy of joy to be in the isolation now we should not come to a quick sort of interpretation of like you know like giving up everything and going going to the Himalayas because isolation and uh, retreating comes in many many different forms yes you know going going for a retreat a weekend retreat a week-long retreat or a month retreat that is what we do this is sort of this is one of the sort of very popularly known technique but much more important than that is really learning to not involve I think we tend to unnecessarily involve many times with a good intention many times we also feel that we have to involve because you know somehow not necessarily because you are a bodhisattva and you are practicing bodhicitta but because of your pride we feel that we can fix things we are such a you know like fixer freak <laughs> you know, we, we, we like to fix things and we, we are proud uh, of we are, we are kind of uh, proud that we feel that we can actually fix things and um, so we tend to be involved and then also not just because of the you know there's also the social expectation your family your friends and then also there's all this you know like a social expectations somebody give you a lunch yesterday so you feel that you have to buy the dinner tonight to this person <laughs> yeah. stuff like that there's so much what do you call it uh, needing to involve a bodhisattva must learn to really of course gently we are not talking about upsetting others but really gently harmoniously elegantly 
majestically, Bodhisattva must try to not to get involved, to retreat. Yes, a Bodhisattva may happen to be in a Thai shop where everybody is talking about the Hillary Clinton and the Donald Trump. And, you know, if a Bodhisattva sort of sits straight in the midst of the conversation, probably there's a big chance of upsetting them. Because, you know, who is this? You know, what, what's he doing? Who is he thinking of, of himself? You know, like a great meditator? You know, you will... So there you will have to sort of really involve with the conversations about, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton, whatever, the politics, the economy, 500 rupees, 1,000 rupees, whatever, <laughs> whatever the conversation that happens to you. You should really involve, but you have to also keep in mind not to be, not, you know, uh, always have this retreating. You are there basically like a mother playing with a kid who is so involved with the sand castle. You know, you have to, you know, you have to say, yes, that's the door, that's the window, here, here you are, this is the elephant, this is the horses, so on and so forth. But deep inside the Bodhisattva, the mother is always, mother knows that come evening, you have to go home, abandoning the grand castle. <laughs> Likewise, the Bodhisattva has to have this sort of all the Gambala Ambargava basically longing for isolation. But of course, practically speaking, I think for a practitioner, I think it's a really good habit to, you know, every day lock your door, stay in the room, switch off your phone, and just sit there even for about half an hour and isolate yourself. Contempt, you know, if you can't do anything that is so holy, such as prayers and mantras, at least look at your toes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably some of those toes are missing. <laughs> you, know, you, you never know in this kind of situation. <laughs> and look at your toes and look at those disgusting nails that's growing. <laughs> and this is you, you know, those nails? Have you thought about it? Those uh -huh. nails, those... Uh, skin, your hair, and your belongings, the table that you have you recently ordered so meticulously and so passionately, and probably you will have to leave this table behind, and people are going to talk about this table that you have ordered after you are dead, of course, and. Um, stuff like that and um, you know you should also maybe during this precious half an hour you should maybe delete all sorts of emails and reach out messages that you have been exchanging with God only knows who <laughs> because after you die people might look at those <laughs> and who knows you, you may have been ex <laughs> exchanging all kinds of you know messages with Ex explicit messages with most unexpected people. You, you could, and I know you are dead already, but if you think about it, won't you be so embarrassed already, even now? So stuff like that, you can really maybe learn to isolate yourself, le learn to love the isolation, basically. And then, and then, a Bodhisattva really have to learn to not waver from the responsibility that the, that you have taken. Of course, the grand responsi responsibility that we have overtaken, I mean, we have undertook, uh, or uh, you know, sort of. Uh, taken upon ourselves, take, took upon ourselves is, you know, to enlighten all the sentient beings. This is something that you cannot afford to waver. But even the small things, if you have agreed to um, do something um, 
to help somebody, you have to really learn to um, do that, fulfill that, accomplish that. So let me, so these are the four. Um, and then Buddha elaborated, of course, much more. This, you know, we, we will not finish this sutra, of course. Five, Bodhisattva can also do five other things that, that the Bodhisattva can help um, uh, not get influenced by non-virtuous friends, free from samsara and quickly achieve enlightenment. And what are those, these five? Tongbanyida uh, nebatam. Again, this is something similar to what we have been discussing. Dwelling in the understanding of the shunyata. Very important. It, this is repeated again and again. Shula Ambargava. Really generate the joy of living with the Dharma. Generate the joy and the enthusiasm. You should always be famished. You should always be hungry for discussion of the Dharma. Even a, 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 you know, even a joy to buy a book, the Dharma book, even a joy to discuss about the Dharma, generating this kind of joy. Joy of uh, basically um, uh, uh, like uh, joy of the Dharma, and then, then also always um, generating the habit of benefiting others, whether it's a small one or a very big um, scale. Learning, learning to how should I say? Um, benefit others and oh wait um, I'm skipping this a little bit okay Tongba um, Nyinaneta understanding the Shuniyata understanding the Shuniyata one and learn to not look for others fault second and um, Instead of looking at others' fault, always not waver from contemplating to uh, contemplating about yourself, and then joy to um, be involved with the Dharma, and then joy to uh, benefit others. So these are the five. Um, qualities of the Bodhisattva that can, this is the five set and um, I will, <coughs> the next one, the six, six, again six different uh, techniques to apply, uh, which is um, um, Bodhisattva must learn to have no attachment to all the uh, basically all kinds of worldly attributes. Uh, but Bodhisattva must also learn the second is Bodhisattva must also learn to have no aversion and uh, Bodhisattva must learn to have no ignorance. Bodhisattva must learn to give the right answer to a question that is being asked. And um, Bodhisattva must learn to be tireless in observing the Bodhisattva uh, duty and then Bodhisattva learning to again this is a similar uh, learning to dwell in the experience of 
शून्य था अच्छा This sixth one, of course, really encompasses almost everything here. Um, no desire, no anger, no ignorance. Of course, the three are fundamental poison. And then, because the Bodhisattva has to practice benefiting others, and especially for the in younger bodhisattvas the probably the most beneficial help that the bodhisattva can provide is giving a correct answer to a spiritual question that has been asked because as a uh, not a how should I put it, not a highly accomplished bodhisattva, you may not be able to do other act of benefiting sentient beings, but at the least, learning to give the correct answer. I think this, of course, means proper hearing, proper contemplation. And then bodhisattva has to learn to be tireless, in um, engaging with the bodhisattva activity um, by remembering that um, everything is an illusion the effort the duration, the quantity, um, quality, which I, by which I mean, you know, like when, we, when a Bodhisattva is trying to help other beings, sometimes the challenges, obstacles can be enormous, challenges can be you know, unending and this is when the Bodhisattva must remember that everything is like a mirage, like a dream. Everything is like a, a reflection in the mirror and through this uh, Bodhisattva learn to be tireless in performing the Bodhisattva activity. And then, of course, applying the uh, shunyata, or the dwelling in the understanding of the shunyata. So, he, at this point, I'm going to ask our friends here to maybe play, play some, sing some songs, and then we will continue.
gagare tare re tare tagare tare ta paga pagare ga re ta de guru e mama re te re re ne pa 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 ga pa gare ga pa ga pa gare ga gare tare ta guru e mama re te guru e pa ga pa ga tare ta ga gare ga gare gare tare ta ga gare pa pa ga pa gare ga gare tare ta ga gare ga gare tare ta ga again by the buddha so this time what i'm going to do is i'm i was i've been trying to sort of go through the all this uh, categories in hope of finishing the sutra but i can see i'm not going to do that this is you know we haven't even finished probably uh, maybe a little bit more than a quarter so i've just i'm i'm going to actually now Um, I relax a little bit and do it. Actually, talk more on one section from how I understand and how I have been reading from the commentary, instead of just going running through all the list. So even this seven application, I may not complete. So beware. Okay, out of the seven. Buddha said the bodhisattva will be you know bodhisattva okay always remember bodhisattva this is a, an answer to what should a bodhisattva do in order to free from samsara and to to escape from the bad influence of the non virtuous friend and to quickly achieve enlightenment so seven different methods are given here out of the seven the first one is um <coughs> being savvy being smart being how should i put it um clever with mindfulness this is kind of a um i think from the way the commentary seems to be telling us many times 
so-called the mindfulness that we <coughs> practice ends up becoming um, cause for constipation <laughs> because you are so worried that you are not mindful <coughs> you end up um, worrying more about um, you you worry more about not not being able to be mindful and by the way if you are savvy skilled smart you should be happy that you do worry about it that in itself is already a mindfulness so we are talking about a really incredible sort of uh, way of being savvy. If somebody who is trying to actualize perfect the art of mindfulness and um, if this person really in his or her mind never managed to do what he or she thinks so-called proper mindfulness and that could be sitting on a cushion, uh, sitting <coughs> straight, looking at a, a certain object such as breathing. And if this person, due to, you know, uh, duties, family engagement, due to a circumstance, situation, and also due to uh, the bad habit of forgetting to do it, you may, you may have all the circumstances to do it, but just because you are lazy, because you are, too, you are so distracted, you may not be able to uh, actually apply what you call mindfulness. But if you actually worry about it, if you think that again a day has gone, and I haven't actually managed to sit on my cushion. Again, the week is gone, week has gone, without actually managing to properly sit and meditate. If you keep on worrying about it, actually the Bodhisattva is being savvy, Bodhisattva is being skilled, and Bodhisattva is being very shrewd in developing the mindfulness. The art of mindfulness is very, very, uh, what do you call it, at times it's very slippery. Art of man, man, mindfulness is also very subjective. Um, because, you know, this is why, actually, uh, let's not forget, the Maitreya Sutra, the, the quintessence of the Mait Maitreya Sutra is actually an aspiration. An aspiration, when you are making aspiration, when you are praying, when you are beseeching, there is an automatic sort of acceptance that you are not do, you don't have this quality, you are not doing what you should be doing and you are praying for the blessing, you are praying for the, some sort of a, yes, the blessing and um, right circumstance and the situation so that you can apply this incredible infinite Bodhisattva uh, methods. So, worry, concern, always brooding to yourself that you are not doing the mindfulness. Getting frustrated for not able to overtake your habit of getting distracted all the time. That is being savvy. That is being skillful. That is being smart, actually. And this, if you can continue, not just like mouthing words, but 
genuinely worry about not being able to meditate. Again and again and again, day after day, consistently, such a person will sooner or later enter into the samadhi or the practice of mindfulness. If not, he or she is already doing it. Because you see, the thing is, if you know that you are not doing, you, 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 if you know you are doing something incorrect, you know what is correct thing to do. If you know that you, you are distracted, then you know the virtue of non-distractions. If you know that you are distracted, you know the virtue of mindfulness. Most of the time, we are not mindful because we don't know the virtue of mindfulness. We do not appreciate the virtue of mindfulness. We don't, we haven't even seen, we haven't tasted the taste of being mindful. So, always reminding ourselves that we are not mindful, that we have to be mindful, we have to generate this mindfulness, not just, uh, you know, intellectually, but actually concerned, actually being really, uh, how should I put it, uh, if there is a, some sort of a sense of urgency that you have to develop this, uh, what do you call it, mm, mindfulness, then this is what we call Bodhisattva, being savvy, intelligent and true in developing the mindfulness. At least for the beginners like us, I would recommend to be really almost like be depressed about it. <laughs> but why are we not being, why again today I forgot to be mindful. Really be depressed. And that kind of depression for not being able to mindful, you are already being mindful. And this is, this is what um, I think the Sutra is talking about. And, and I'm basing on some of the commentaries. And then the second one is a chair uh, Bodhisattva being, uh, well, how should I put it? Uh, Bodhisattva being savvy with the Dharma. I think in this case the Dharma is referring to the path, actual, what do you call it, the technique. We are not talking about the phenomena, we are talking about the path, the spiritual path. See, Buddha taught so many, many different methods for each different emotions, for each different defilements. Buddha may have taught hundreds of different ways to overcome, transform, or ignore, or befriend. Um, make use of this emotion many many different ways sometimes <coughs> a young bodhisattva not being savvy not being shrewd in choosing uh, not being shrewd when you are dwelling in the path being stuck being obsessed or being how should i put it being um, applying a particular path and uh, getting so entangled with this particular method, not having this openness to other methods that are available. Giving you an example. For instance, Buddha taught karma. And when he taught karma, he talked about rebirth. Obviously, when we talk about the karma and the rebirth, he talks about a person, agent. He talks about five aggregates. He talks about, you know, a person who performs negative action, 
in his or her later life or this uh, in the future times he or she needing to go through the consequences of this negative action so on and so forth this is how buddha sometimes teach but at the same time buddha also taught shunyata where he negates the existence of the self existence of soul existence of a person therefore he negates the how should i put it um, uh, the whole sort of phenomena of karma whole phenomena of rebirth so there are two seemingly contradictory teachings where in one teaching he says there is a karma and the other he talks about the shunyata bodhisattva has to be savvy and shrewd in really applying these both methods where and when it is appropriate when a bodhisattva gets okay for instance so giving you an example when a bodhisattva is too carried away by the shunyata i mean as a young bodhisattva there is no such thing as um, what do you call it getting carried away by the shunyata but what i'm saying is a young bodhisattva in a, uh, not a complete bodhisattva may have a not a in, not a complete picture of the shunyata maybe the understanding of the shunyata is very lopsided partial therefore the understanding of the shunyata could actually end up becoming very nihilistic very negative very sort of negation oriented and this kind of understanding of the shunyata can also create unnecessary doubt or unnecessary <coughs> downfall everything does not exist there's no soul there's no self there's no rebirth there's no past life there's no future life there's no virtue there's no non virtue therefore we can do whatever we like that kind of you know negative uh, understanding and negative action could arise this is where the bodhisattva has to be careful and bodhisattva has to be shrewd in understanding that shunyata has got nothing to do with the negating the karma shunyata is got nothing to do with the negating the relative truth if you have not overcome the defilement if you have not overcome the uh, emotion as long as there is a emotion and as long as there is a uh, defilement there is going to be the illusion of karma there is going to be illusion of rebirth there is going to be illusion of suffering hope fear all of that and as long for instance as long as you are having a nightmare and if you don't know it is a dream that it is just a nightmare you are subject to suffer you have to go through the pain and the anxiety of the nightmare if you have understood that this is just a dream instantly most probably instantly you are released from all the pain all the hope and the fear but until you know that this is just a dream this is just an illusion whole heartedly not just intellectually you are still a subject of consequences um, karma and all of that so this is where the bodhisattva has to be so savvy i mean uh, uh, more traditionally uh, what uh, this is referring is that the bodhisattva has to be so um, what do you call it uh, bodhisattva has to be uh, open minded in um, adopting teaching expounding practicing sharvakayana pratyaka budayana bodhisattva yana where it is appropriate not only to himself or herself but also to the others <clears throat> i think um, you know there's so many many different um, 
sort of discipline. I don't think uh, we can completely um, finish this, but um, uh, at least I hope um, I have uh, made some of you think that um, the sutra of, uh, you know, the sutra that is popularly known in the Tibetan language as Kanjuri has incredible amount of wisdom that is not just uh, full of repeated uh, rituals and, you know, instructions on how to, you know, sort of cultural sort of uh, hang-ups and uh, sort of survival kit that uh, it actually has a really profound, um, complete path to liberate sentient beings and um, well, to liberate oneself and the sentient beings. Uh, there is, um, finally there is, um, and this is something, this is why I'm jumping to this section because at least I should uh, just read the, the aspiration part because this is the quintessence of the um, uh, sutra. So what I'll do is I'll just read and um, you can just sit and listen to the sound of my reading. And this is the um, aspiration of the Maitreya. さんじゅんのちゃんさんのとんとんにでんばいちゅんじゅんさんのとんにでんばいちゅんじゅんさんのとんにでんばいちゅんじゅんさんのとんにでんばいちゅんじゅんさんのとんにでんばいちゅんじ